You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we're doing a SmackDown Live recap from December 12th. Yeah, the go-home show to Clash of Champions. Which uh, I think we both said that we forgot. Yeah, yeah, it was just kind of uh, kind of sprung up on us, I yeah. would say. Time's going by quickly. A little bit, a little bit. A lot of wrestling. Well, you know. Yeah, but uh, overall, decent show. Uh, for what SmackDown has been lately, yes. Yeah. It was entertaining. It, it was a lot of the same stuff. But it was your typical go-home show. Maybe the reason why we liked it is because we didn't see Shane. There's good possibility of that. Because <laughs> I was very excited when we didn't open the show with Shane. Yeah. So, we start the show with a recap of the events that happened last week in the main event. Mm-hmm. And then we, uh... Actually, open the show with uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn backstage, handing out flyers. They say they're occupying SmackDown with their "Yep" movement against the tyrannical Shane McMahon. Yeah, I, I love, I love because at that point they were in the shirts, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, they were in Daniel Bryan yes shirts, except for they had like a paper letter P taped over the S's. It's good. So it was just the "Yep" shirts. It, it was That's good great. stuff. <clears throat> Um, yeah, they were handing it out to all, I guess, uh, random people backstage and mm-hmm. all sound people. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a good way to start off the show. Yeah, it's funny. Um, but AJ Styles comes out to the ring, mm-hmm. so we're completely uh, separated from that yes. stuff. And, you know, he uh, cuts a promo, hyping the match for Sunday mm-hmm. against with him and Jinder. Yes. And then he, uh, he says that Jinder would do anything possible to get his title back or he did everything possible to keep his title yes and he will do anything possible to get the title yeah back. he referenced the punjabi prison match and mm-hmm. having to uh call on the great Kali yep. and all the fans booed <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then every time he's used the Singh brothers to his advantage to win matches mm-hmm. and uh so he calls uh, the Singh brothers then just come out yeah i was gonna say i think they just came out yep. right at that point so they show footage of Jinder beating both of them down last week. Mm-hmm. And uh, AJ kind of feels bad for what happened. Mm-hmm. So he tells them to come in the ring and we're going to hug it out. At, at this point, they start hugging each other outside the ring. He's like, no, no, no. Get in the ring. Come see Uncle Al. He's going to give you a hug. That's what he said. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so they say that they want to be in AJ's corner at clash of champions Mm -hmm. and then they run down jinder and talk about all the bad things they made him do we didn't even want to do that he made us dress alike we didn't oh wait no (laughs) we we did want to do that (laughs) he thinks we're twins um he made us kiss his feet and and they smell smell like like cheese cheese and garlic and something else so then aj's like all right and and this was good because i figured they were just going to bypass this completely Uh but he was like what happened on the uh, india tour when uh you were accompanying uh gender at a ringside and then mm-hmm. they brought up footage of yeah that which i figured they were just gonna completely completely over look yeah, it that's a nice touch yeah no no it was good because they actually you know it um, made sense well yeah <laughs> and actually acknowledge something that happened so then uh you know aj calls their bluff gender comes out mm-hmm. and then aj beats up the Singh brothers throws him out of the ring and then gender just why are you a little angry at him and <laughs> yeah, whatnot? Yeah. So was that at least it wasn't Shane McMahon opening the show. That's true. Yeah, that wasn't it wasn't a bad segment. Mm-mm. It, it uh, actually built to uh, the feud, and and this is something that we've kind of bypassed because of the lack of AJ on the on the card or on the the show. <clears throat> they haven't had the same match over and over again like SmackDowns like t- to do in the past. Well. <clears throat> He fought, what, the Singh brothers in a two-on-one match, right? Yeah, but it's not just them being in tag team matches, AJ and Jinder. Jinder hasn't fought. No, but I wouldn't have minded had they done... I mean, granted, there's no other singles feud going on. Yeah. Is there any single match besides this one? No. And the women's one? But that's a lumberjack match. That doesn't really count match. because it's yeah. got the entire roster. So it's not like you could have taken two feuds and were yeah. like, all right, we'll put you... Because that would have been fine. I would have been fine That's with what that. they usually do, though. But it would have been okay in this instance because Jinder never wrestles on SmackDown, really. That's true. But I think they're trying to keep it that way. Yeah, I guess to protect him mm-hmm. or protect us. Uh, a little both. Makes sense. So, But, uh, but yeah, 
the, it was a good way to establish the feud for the pay per view. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. It was fine to go into the pay per view with this being the there. the send off. Yeah. to it. Absolutely. All right. But, yep. So up next we have Charlotte versus Ruby Riot. Uh, Ruby is accompanied by the rest of the Riot Squad. Mm-hmm. Natalia is on commentary. Yes. So Charlotte is by her lonesome out there. Yes. And uh, <laughs> uh, Natalia is going on about how she appreciates the Riot Squad and how they, she believes in what they believe in or something like that. Yeah. And uh, so at one point, Charlotte has control. Um, then this is another one of those commercial matches where you, most of the match took place yep. during the, oh, yeah. during Absolutely. the commercial. Um, but yeah, Charlotte has control, but she gets knocked outside with Ruby. Um, I think the, she gets surrounded by Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan. Mm-hmm. I think she's fending them off. Yeah, she was able to take out those two, and then Natalia gets up from well, the commentary table and hits her with the clothes. Well, line. she actually got up first, and then Charlotte had kind of just like pushed her away, oh, and okay. that's when Natalia clotheslined her. That's when the referee threw the match out. Yeah. They all beat down Charlotte. They throw her outside the ring, mm-hmm. set her up for that steps, uh, again, leaning against the guard wa- rail and going to yeah. do the uh, the catapult into him. No, which, and then, would, which is what took out Naomi a couple yes. weeks ago. And Naomi okay. comes out, yeah. makes the save, kind of scares them away. They go up the ramp, and all of a sudden Tamina, Carmella, and Lana attack them from behind. Yeah. So it was kind of... Very similar to what they did on Raw, but a little different. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Copy my homework, but don't make it look like you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. It, I don't know. Again, if these storylines weren't exactly the same, they'd be good. Right, and I think that's the problem, is so. because this is happening after Raw. Yeah, because <clears throat> watching it, I had no problem with it. Thinking about it afterwards is mm-hmm. where I think, like, this is kind of... That's where you went wrong. Yeah. You thought about it. Yeah. Not supposed to do those things. So, um, also, uh, a funny note. While they were setting uh, Charlotte up for the catapult, I think it was Corey Graves, he goes, so this is the same thing that took out Naomi for a few weeks. I'm like, (laughs) week. It was two weeks ago, weeks ago. Yeah. Week. And then she's back already. That's true. Uh, So we go backstage, and Daniel Bryant's on the phone with Shane McMahon. Mm Mm-hmm. And he says, don't worry about anything. I'll be out on commentary during the main event. So at this point, Sammy and Kevin Owens walk up, and they hand Shane a flyer. They leave, and he just looks at it. And that's how we close the segment. Mm-hmm. So, Well, you know, he doesn't know what to make of it. It's true. I'd be confused, oh, he too. Dan, Daniel Bryan, a flyer. I don't know why I wrote Shane. Oh, yeah, I, did, <laughs> I didn't even think of that, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, he handed, they handed Dan O'Brien a flyer. That's it. All right, so up next, we got Dolph vs. Baron mm. with Bobby Roode on commentary. Mm. So, again, basically the same thing as last week, except for you put... Change uh, Roode and Ziggler yes. around. Yep. Um, what, did they wrestle for a minute or two? Uh, it was a little longer than that, yeah. but it was not long. Um, but, yeah, a few minutes into the match, Bobby Roode gets up. He's like, I got to take care of something. And then he takes off his robe, goes into the ring, hits, I believe, Ziggler with uh, the Dip. DDT. Mm-hmm. Corbin punches him. I think he, what, he set him up for the end of days or not the end. I think he was going to yeah. set him up for some. Oh, chokeslam. Oh, he grabs him by the throat. Okay, yeah. He kicks him in the stomach and hits him with the DDT as well. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah. That apparently, was it. Apparently, Bobby wants to make the U.S. title glorious. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Corey Graves was very happy to sit next to him. Oh, yeah, he, the whole time. <laughs> He's like, I know it was short-lived, but I had a great time. <laughs> oh, man. Corey Graves is very passionate. Yeah. So next we find out that I don't know if this is a permanent thing or this was just for this week, but it seems like fashion files are going to be moved to YouTube and WWE.com. It makes sense because, A, it moves the or it makes you like tune in to other stuff right um and it doesn't take up time that could otherwise be used more productively right but you would think these people would be utilized on the show then oh yeah yeah there's no reason right. for them not to be so on. we'll see where it goes yeah but yeah they give us kind of a clip of it 
I think it was like 30 seconds of it. We just yeah. watched it before, and it was yes. like, what, four and a half minutes, something like that? Yes. The, it was decently long, and yeah, it was the, good. The, those are good fashion files. <clears throat> um, so basically, the only little part they showed on SmackDown was uh, it was Brizongo standing across from the Ascension, <laughs> and Fandango said that if, it get, if it'll get the Ascension off our back, we're, we'll face the Bludgeon Brothers. Yeah, and you actually had to watch it to see how it progressed to this point. Yeah, but at that point they announced that the Bludger Brothers will be facing Brizongo at Clash Champions. Yes, so this was it's kind of, I guess, the blow off to the whole Fashion Files thing. Yeah, because during the little the Fashion Files clip, um, they established that the Bludger Brothers were behind the attack yeah. and destroying their office right. and all that stuff. So. Mm. They finally it. solved the case. Now it's just a matter of taking care mm. of business. Yep. And then this led us to the uh, little Bludgeon Brothers clip beforehand. Yeah. Saying they're up next. Yes. And they had another match. That was a squash match Obviously. against the returning Colin Delaney, who... I don't, I don't yeah. know if you can really call that a return. Uh, who knows? It could be a James Ellsworth part two. You never it, know. It could be. Yeah. Um. And I don't know who his tag partner was, uh, but he was a screamer. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> what was it, a, a power bomb? Yeah, there was a double power bomb. Yeah. They set him up. And, and he screamed like a little girl. Mm-hmm. But, and then uh, they won the match with their double crucifix slam. Yeah, that's not a surprise. Not surprising. Um, we will get into it. I'm not going to get into it now. We will get into it. The Clash Champions <laughs> preview video. Makes sense. Yes. So, you get... Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn in the ring. Yeah. I, I love their shirts. Yeah, I mean, they've been a good highlight of the shows. It's just, I don't know. I, I think it's just really been the involvement with Shane. Yeah. It just really turned me off to well, everything. That and this shouldn't be the main <clears throat> focus. <throat> this should be a B story at best. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> um. So, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, so they basically talk about how Shane McMahon took it, well, actually, just management in general, took it too far last week. Yes. And then they show a clip of Kevin Owens being handcuffed to the ring rope and the rest of the events that happen. And uh, he goes, you know, he talks about Stephanie McMahon and Vince McMahon and then says that Shane is the worst McMahon of all. Which is impressive. Yes. And he's basically doing this all because he can't defend his family's honor. Mm-hmm. Um, so then they call people back from <laughs> backstage to come out. And help them occupy SmackDown, to which obviously no one came out. Mm-hmm. So then Daniel Bryan walks out. He I just th- kind of stands there. Oh, yeah, he did just walk out. Okay. And then five seconds yeah. later or so, his music finally plays, and then he does the yes thing. Well, and- I think it was meant to be, like, uh, at first, I, I think like you- I think it played out the way they wanted to. Oh, okay. <clears throat> like at it was first- just odd. Yeah, well, I think it was supposed to be... Like, is he with them or against them kind of tension. I got gotcha. you. <clears throat> Had he come out with no music, he would have been with them, and then you play the music, and he's the authority figure. Yeah. So he uh, he comes <clears throat> out, and you're like, oh, is he is he with them or against right. them? And then he comes down to the ring, mm-hmm. does the yes thing. Yep. Um, he's like, what are you two doing? Yeah. They were it's super like, happy to see him out there. Well, yeah, they're excited. <clears throat> and it's like, oh, we're doing what you did. Yeah. We're just like you. Yeah. And then he's like, you're nothing like me. I did it for all these people. And he points to the fans. Yeah. And then it was Sammy say, oh, yeah, but we're doing it for us or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, because he's like, well, this this is the same thing, yeah, except for it's for us. us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then Daniel Bryan says that he will make sure the match on Sunday is fair. Yes. And he is appointing himself the second referee in the match. Mm-hmm. So we will have... Both Shane and Daniel Bryan yes. as uh, referees. Something to note is that Daniel Bryan has said, I think, a couple times that he has Shane's back, like right. Shane mm-hmm. has, or he hopes that Shane has his back, like, like he's he has. had his, mm-hmm. has Shane's. That's true. Um, because it seems like there's been a little <clears throat> rift in the two's relationship, and because Shane's doing a lot of things behind Daniel Bryan's back. So that's something to, I guess, keep an eye on yeah. because I'm sure there's going to be some kind of screwiness going on. Oh, absolutely. During the, <clears throat> during the match at uh, Clash Champions. There has to be. There's there's no way around it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Moving on. Yes. We, we have... Oh, 
You want to take right. it? We have Rusev Day, mm-hmm. the team of Rusev and Aiden English, against the, the Usos, the current uh, SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Yep. And then New Day were on commentary. Well, they were eating a lot of pancakes. Yes. Um, Biggie had the whole. Um, he had the tray. Tray in his hand. And throughout the match, he was passing them down to Byron and Tom. And Corey was not very happy about like, pancakes. Get those away from me. <laughs> I got syrup in my pocket. <laughs> this, this was fun. Um, and then I think Kofi yelled at him. was like, don't touch the pancakes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, so before the match, we finally got the rest of the 12 days of Rusev. Oh, uh, yes. From Aiden English. Yes. I mean, the Usos came out and cut a promo. Mm-hmm. And then after that, Benjamin and Gable came out and cut a promo. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you what, Chad Gable is actually Kurt Angle's son. Mm-hmm. I don't care what uh, anyone says. Yeah, this was it was a good interaction between the two of them, and I liked the fact that um, Shelton Benjamin said his name like the Usos. Or Shelton, something. yeah, Benjamin. Yeah, so he was <laughs> imitating them. <laughs> And then they were imitating Big E too for at one point. Oh yeah, well they're going to be the next, next w, w. w. And then the, the camera pans the uh, commentary, and you just see the new day. Go, huh? what the hell are these guys doing? And then <laughs> everybody in the ring is confused. It, it was it was good. Yeah, I, I really think this has been SmackDown spotlight. Has been the tag division. Yeah, it's it. Like, we said it over and over again. Raw doesn't have a tag division. It's true. SmackDowns is huge. It's the only good thing about SmackDown, and yeah, granted, Raw's that feud's great, but their tag division itself Outside is of nothing, nothing, yeah. So, but yeah, um, so Rusev and Aiden English end up getting the victory. Mm-hmm. Um, it's nonsense going on outside the ring. Uh, what did uh, Rusev gave Jimmy a kick to the head when he was on the apron, mm. and then Aiden English? I don't know what his finishers called. I'm guessing that's what it was. It was yeah, like a probably forward. He kind of like a DDT almost, but he dropped them forward instead of going back. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was that. Yeah, I, I, I don't think we watched enough. Uh, Aiden Ford no, Ford Ford <laughs> yeah, to to really know what the. Oh no, because they had a team finisher. Mm. That's right. That I forgot about that. Um. But yeah, the only thing to pull away from this match is that Rusev and Aiden English will not be winning. Yeah, they're more than likely going to be eating the pen for whoever yeah. wins. Two weeks in a row, they got victories over the Usos and the New Day. Yeah, so that's that just screams, okay, we're not gonna, mm-hmm. we're not gonna go over. Nope. So we get a backstage segment with uh, Renee interviewing AJ, mm-hmm. and uh, I think I don't remember exactly what she said to him, but. He basically said that, unlike Jinder, I don't need any help. And Sunday I will prove that why I'm the champion. And then he gets attacked by Jinder. Yes. And he went to sleep. That was that. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. And then All we right. got the announcement that Mojo Raleigh versus Zack Ryder will be on the kickoff show of Clash of Champions. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, it's very exciting. Mm-hmm. That's where that feud belongs, though. So. Yeah, it's true. They did do something good there. Yeah, I mean, we pegged this feud to be on a a show what three months back or something like that. Well, no, you you kept on saying, "Oh, it's gonna happen. Oh, it's okay. gonna happen," Fair and enough. then it finally happened a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, because they had a tag match at the on the pre-show of Survivor Series, and I think we thought that that's when it was gonna happen. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, I think they had a couple tag matches on the pre-show yeah that we we kept on assuming that yeah that was gonna happen mm-hmm. i think hell in the cell is the same um, yeah i think they fought gable and benjamin or something like probably that. yeah um anyway mm-hmm. let's move on to real stuff i guess you can call this real stuff yeah so uh shinsuke and orton go down in the ring mm-hmm. and um i guess who was it, it renee? renee yeah i think it was renee yeah she uh, asked them about uh, how they feel about daniel bryan and shane mcmahon being uh guest referees mm. and orton doesn't really care mm. he's like it doesn't really matter all i know we're, is i hate kevin owens and Sami Zayn. yeah they're gonna make them lose their jobs right and then this was great this is perfect so she goes to shinsuke and he just goes yep yep <laughs> <laughs> that's all you needed to do it's true that's it it's true they they did it properly yes so uh so yeah. But yeah that leads us right to the main event 
of Shinsuke Nakamura versus Kevin Owens, which I think was announced, what, last week? It was announced last week, yeah. yes. So they faced, what, a couple times on SmackDown, I believe? Uh, I think there's a good chance that uh, Owens might be one of Nakamura's like highest yeah. amount of matches with. Yeah. I know that sounds weird. Probably number two next to Ziggler. <laughs> uh that'd be fair either okay. ziggler or um corbin oh yeah they did have a little thing yeah. going back I but he has he has faced owens quite a bit yeah. but uh yeah so randy orton and Sami Zayn were at ringside not a surprise here mm-hmm. and daniel bryan was on commentary and yes. this really played a good factor into this yeah because he was going back and forth with uh byron saxton yes because and byron saxton is definitely a company man yeah he kept on sa- asking dumb questions <clears throat> and, oh if the boss thinks it's a good idea of course i think it's a good idea yeah. and he's like what are the rules gonna be if there's two referees I'm like it really doesn't matter <laughs> and then like byron saxton was like saying basically nothing happens outside of the WWE because yeah. Daniel Bryan was saying something about him and Shinsuke have known each other outside of yeah. WWE or that, something like that. Yeah, um, he he uh, he faced Kevin Owens or mm-hmm. Kevin Owens turned on him or something like that, and he's known these guys for such a long time. It didn't happen in here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. Yeah. It didn't happen. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's pretty funny because mm. in all fairness, what he's doing is taking a shot at Vince. Right. Because it's like, because that's, you know, how he feels, more or less. Yeah, oh, he's it, been a little it seemed more... like it was definitely a little off the cuff there. Yeah, because, like, he's been a little different recently, mm-hmm. but his his idea in the past was yeah. pretty much that the only thing that mattered was him. him. Yeah, So, um, and I did hear a rumor that apparently Talking Smack is coming back. Why? I don't know. So dumb. Like, they're, I know they did it after the They're probably the clinging on everything that Daniel Bryan likes to try to keep him. Maybe, I guess. I don't know. He's uh, under contract for at least September, a little. I think. Yeah, I was going to say it's probably a little while Something longer. Something like that. But yeah, so this was a good match. Nothing uh, too crazy Nothing here. to shake a stick at? Nah. I mean, well, the problem was is that 9.30, they started coming out. Mm-hmm. Then we got a commercial break. Didn't mm-hmm. start till after 9.40. Yeah. And then we get another commercial break there in, you know, in between this. Yeah. And then it ends at like 9.55. And then you have nonsense. Yeah, that's true. So basically, Nakamura had Kevin Owens set up for an exploder suplex. Mm -hmm. Uh, Owens is able to reverse it. And then I guess he went to clothesline. Shinsuke, Shinsuke ducks. He hits the referee. And Daniel Bryan sees this. Referee's laying on the apron. Yep. So Daniel Bryan goes and starts pulling the shirt off the referee. (laughs) Slips on himself. And I don't remember what Shinsuke, he had hit a move on uh owens. owens i don't know maybe it was the explode no i don't think he did hit it i don't know i don't remember I, what he I, hit i was too focused on the daniel the bryan taking the shirt yeah, off of the, was, the referee funny so he you know near fall Sami Zayn starts getting in the ring yeah well then, the, the commentator's like well if it didn't take him so long to get right, get to yeah. the, make the cut make the count the pin. Would, yeah <clears throat> um so then orton gets in the ring the two of them fight go outside yeah um so Sami Zayn gets back up on the apron. Shinsuke, I think, goes to attack him. I don't know if he hit him or not. I, I think Owens at that point grabbed him. Well, no, him. if he hit Zayn. No, I, I know. I'm just yeah. saying after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. after that. Yeah, he, he took uh, Shinsuke, threw him against the ropes, and then hit him with a pop-up power bomb. Daniel Bryan counts to three. Yes. And, and of course, it. he was in position then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's funny. They're absolutely playing Bryan to be a, uh, a heel because... It's weird. The whole By- Byron is uh, was arguing with him instead of Graves, mm-hmm. but oh yeah, you know Graves was on Daniel Bryan's side. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, that, it's it's, pretty, a, it's very strange. It's pretty telling. Yeah. And again, the good guys are the bad guys, and yep. the bad guys are the good guys. Makes no it's sense. It's bizarro world. Yeah, it's true. Um, so then, Sammy and Kevin are up on the stage, and Renee does the after match interview, <laughs> and then uh, she asks them if they have any final words. And then, then they basically said that Shane, Shinsuke, and Orton can't take this away from them, mm-hmm. and that they are say they say they're the best, and then they say yep a lot, and that that's that's about it. Yep, <laughs> yep. But yeah, no. Overall, it wasn't a bad show from for the go home. Yeah, especially after last week's show, which was probably one of their worst shows they've had. It was lackluster. Yep. To begin with, or yes. uh, as an understatement. 
So, yeah, this was our SmackDown review. We will see you for our Clash of Champions preview and predictions video. Yes. If you liked what you saw here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.